Decline of the auto industry in Michigan. Flint, Michigan, once sparkled like a freshly buffed hubcap in the spectacle of American industrial prowess, a dazzling testament to General Motors' alchemical magic. Imagine the early 20th century when Flint boasted more chrome and steel than a Transformers convention. William C. Durant, the automotive virtuoso, set up his grand enterprise in Flint in 1908 and the city roared to life, humming with assembly line rhythms and dreams of chrome-plated futures. General Motors, under Durant's leadership, was the driving force behind Flint's industrial boom, establishing the city as a hub of automotive manufacturing. But as time hurtled forward, Flint strutted proudly as Michigan's second largest city, flaunting nearly 200,000 residents riding high on the fumes of prosperity. However, the 1970s brought an unexpected pothole to Flint's joyride. The golden era of auto manufacturing crumbled faster than a subpar suspension system, and Flint's meteoric ascent screeched to a grinding halt. The trouble began with a seismic shift in the auto industry's gears. By the mid-1980s, General Motors was reaping record profits and basking in hubris, so much so that they decided to lay off thousands of Flint's diligent workers. It was as if GM had agreed to trade Flint's labor for cheaper markets in Mexico, leaving the city in economic disarray. Picture a once thriving metropolis witnessing its factories close faster than a clearance sale on Black Friday. Once a shining beacon of the working class, the city was chaotic. Factory jobs evaporated overnight, like glittering confetti in a gale. The resulting job losses didn't just dim Flint's economic prospects, they turned them into a full-blown tragedy. With jobs vanishing, education became a distant dream. Schools shuttered, leaving Flint's youth with as much hope for a future as a snowball in July. The housing crisis was a real doozy. The market crashed and burned, leaving many Flint residents drowning in mortgages they couldn't afford. Bankruptcy and foreclosure weren't just problems, they became the new status quo. The fallout was brutal. Poverty soared, with a staggering 36% of Flint's residents living below the poverty line by 2009. Educational disparities became as glaring as neon lights in a blackout, with over half of Flint's children living in poverty. Violent crime rates spiked to such heights that Flint's reputation shifted from a city to a dystopian cautionary tale. However, amidst the wreckage and desolation, Flint's spirit endured with unwavering resilience. The city's determination shined brighter than ever. Initiatives to rejuvenate the downtown area, repurpose vacant spaces, and attract new businesses were akin to throwing a lifeline to a shipwrecked sailor. The community's spirit, though battered, remained unbroken. Why should we pay attention to Flint's turbulent past? Because it's a stark and apologetic reminder of the consequences when an industrial titan collapses. Flint's narrative is both fragile and robust, serving as a warning for today's dynamic economic landscape. As industries transform and new economic realities emerge, Flint's story vividly mirrors the obstacles that other communities might confront. In conclusion, Flint's fall from industrial splendor to economic hardship isn't just a tragic episode, it's a crucial lesson. It underscores that the rise and fall of cities like Flint provide profound insights into the broader narrative of American industry. Understanding this history is not merely academic, it's a roadmap for navigating the bumpy terrain of our ever-evolving economic world. You've been listening to a portion of the RPTM podcast. We hope we made you laugh, but more importantly, we hope we made you cry. If you found this episode engaging, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on our upcoming thought-provoking discussions.